Okay, one, one sec. He's got he's got his mic on. Okay, so. What's up? Oh, sorry. I don't mean to use priority while talking to you. Um, well, you're our you're our local um logic and and math and whatnot guy. So, tell me, do you think that it's possible for two things to simultaneously be equal and unequal, in the same sense at the same time? Wait, are you talking about? Just like, like, what do you mean by two objects? Are you talking about Leibniz's law or something else? We uh, honestly, like, I would apply this to anything. Like, is there anything out there that you think can simultaneously be equal and unequal? Well, no. <laughs> okay. Um, now here, look, look as at, I said, as look, as well. look at, look okay. at this little. But I need more. Can, like, I need more. Can you ask me my question now, AI? When you sure, can. sure. Um, let me just mute this sophist. Um, yeah. So here, let me let me post a little deduction for you here. So you see that first premise there, Genevieve? If your view affirms a given human is trade equalizable to a given animal while retaining moral value, then your view affirms the given non-human animal has moral value. Um, I mean, do you do you find this a tough notion to wrap your head around that if uh, two beings are equalized with respect to all their traits, so everything that's true of them is equalized, that they can't differ with respect to some trait? Wait, sorry, like my, my internet is kind of shitty, so could you just repeat the very last part you said? Do you think that it would be possible for two, two beings to be equalized with respect to all their traits? So traits just meaning, in that instance, anything true of the beings in question. Do you think it would make sense to say that they are equalized with respect to all their traits, yet that they are unequal with respect to some trait? Well, no, but I mean, this is going, if we're talking traits as properties, and this is going to Leibniz's law, right? Where if two things have the same properties, is it, is it referring to the same object? And there's people who actually disagree with that. But in terms of just properties, qua properties, then obviously not. Let, let me push back on that. So it's not actually anything about the identity of indiscernibles. So we're not making a statement about whether um, after equalization you're dealing with two objects or whether they share an identity. Okay, yeah, then, yeah, yeah sure. You're, that's, that's obviously wrong then. Yeah, okay. Um, now, <laughs> now, what we've been doing for the last, like, I don't know how long's it been guys like an hour or something is we've been we've been struggling with unethical vegan to to get him to understand this uh this premise. I thought maybe you might have some some words of wisdom. If you don't, then don't worry about it, but I mean, I can't get him to wrap his head around it. I mean, it seems pretty fucking basic to me that if two things are equalized with respect to all their traits, they can't be unequal with respect to some trait. That's just what it would mean for them to be equal with respect to all what, their traits. What uh, what what a trade? Uh, whoever the, this is in reference to, what trait do you think they don't share? Go ahead, unethical. Well, that was not my. Uh, that was not the discussion, you know. No, you're yeah, you're trying to you, no 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 don't you try don't you yeah. dare try your weasel tactics you you doubt P one you said that you doubt P one are you gonna tell me now that you affirm P one? No, I want to ask you a question. Okay, so why don't why don't why don't you attempt to why don't you attempt to show Genevieve your issue with P one there? Thank you, thank you. So my uh, what I want to ask you then is uh, when you say trait equalizable, are you saying that you're switching the traits? Is it a uh, not the final product, you know, of the once all the traits have have been switched between the two. I'm, I'm talking about the uh, the process, right? Are you saying that this is an ongoing process, or it is a, or the final uh, product is already given in the premise? So that's what I want to ask you. Do, do you understand what I'm asking? Wait, are you asking me? Uh, yeah. Wait, I'm not, I'm not quite understanding what you're saying. Are you asking? I feel like that's something you would ask the person who made the argument, right? Not me. Yeah, but he's incapable of uh, answering questions, so I'm, I'm going to ask you then. Wait, so it seems to if me, just right. on a prima facie glance at this, that it's just saying that the the, the, the dispute is between whether or not uh, it's possible for us to say that two things share all the same proper traits or whatever, but they're not equal in some other respect. So what I'm assuming this is about, right? Yeah, I mean, the way he phrased it uh, now, uh, uh, just a minute ago, was that the two uh, objects already have the same uh, traits after the equalization process, you know? And I'm, I'm asking you, like, uh, is that process, uh, is that an ongoing process, or has that... Uh, because the way he argues, right, is uh, when you uh, in name the trait, is that this process is actually switching uh, during the conversation flow. 
or that this process is ongoing, you know, and this is the confusion part, you know, because uh, I think he wants the contradiction to happen be uh, after the trade equalization process, but there's a lot of backlash upon, upon the actual process of trade equalization. You know, this is the simple ask, uh, question I wanted to ask to him in reference to set theory. Hey, what does but, this have to do with set theory exactly? Well, uh, more specifically, it's about uh, if you have a set. Uh, are you familiar with like a set and elements in a set? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, oh, nice. Uh, would you say that if you have a set and you remove or add an element to this set, is it the same set? Well, I mean, that's that's not really a math question. It's more of a philosophy question. But no, there they wouldn't be. The, the sets are defined in terms of whatever their elements are, right? So if you if you change it by adding an element or doing something, you know, instead of set, it's not the set anymore, right? But that's if you're if you're making this about like muriology or about personal identity, that's a that's a philosophical question. Yeah. Uh, well, um, uh, the way I wanna uh, formulate it is in like. I guess in mathematically, but it's hard to do it in this case. Uh, so yeah, so just use you can use set theory. Just explain like where the confusion is with the argument. So you have two um, beings or something, right? And they have elements of traits, right? So where, where's the confusion in terms of like set? And um, well, and Ge Genevieve, I just want to pop in. Also, there's a um, sophistry move that some people will make here, where they equate trait with property, and then um, try to say that on substance theory. Uh, you could equalize all the traits and something would remain unequal. So just keep in mind that in the context of this argument, trait is an all-encompassing term. And if there's something other than properties, like essence, that would also be a trait. It's just things true of the being. Okay. okay. Well, I just want to, in reference to set theory, that if you, once you even removed or added an element to a trait, it's no longer considered the same, um, the same set. So uh, the part of... Um, if you're going to say that humans have more value this set and you are the trait or switch traits or whatever that has been done it's no longer even considered the same set hence the contradiction can never uh, well wait hold on a sec so are you talking about this seems like it's a, again a muriology problem sorry hold on a yeah no problem so yeah this seems to be like a so like for instance suppose you have the, the trait of holding something in your hand right now and 10 seconds later you don't are you saying you're a, a, we're talking about a different person? Well, I'm not. Uh, well, I, I'm not. On, uh, I'm not trying to apply it to the real. Uh, if you, if you, I mean, there's different uh, formulations uh, because uh, if you just talk about in terms of set theory, like in terms of you have the numbers, uh, all the um, integers to <laughs> up to ten, right? In that sense, it's kind of uh, it doesn't make sense to apply name the trait, but I. Uh, if you're gonna apply it in like the practical, uh, real-world sense scenario, then um, the set theory doesn't really apply. So, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm I'm not exactly following still with the set theory because this isn't this isn't really a thing mathematicians care about. No one ever says, oh, you know, um, let's take you know the axiom of affinity and we we construct the naturals uh, via whatever you know method we choose. Are we are we constructing a new? Uh, type of set are we doing like those kind of questions never come up right no one really cares if you take a set and you change it is it is there a new set or is it a different set like it's just you know it's not something that's super important so i'm not entirely sure still maybe i'm just misunderstanding but i'm not entirely sure what this has to do with the argument well it has to do with the contradiction part that uh, the contradiction can never occur because you're referring to the two different sets now and the contradiction of this set has and does not have more value uh, okay, wait, never... so... No, sorry to interrupt. Just let's just walk through yeah, it, all no right? Problem. So like, so like we started at say the beginning, right? And we have two uh, sets for the two different things we're equalizing, right? Yeah. And so through this argument is just sort of equalizing the traits, right? So at let's say at time t or something, if c equals zero, there's these two sets, and then at the end they're all equalized for traits, right? Uh, yeah, you mean that, uh, uh, but then there's a new notion that this new set still has more value. Is that what you're referring to? Wait, say that again, sorry? Uh, when you uh, when you say that T uh, is now like T2, like, uh, or like, yeah. um, so you're saying that this new set uh, still re retains more value, the way it's phrased in the argument, right? Right. So we're like, we're, I'm just trying to figure out where the issue is.
Well, I mean, the issue would be that uh, I would say uh, that you're referring to two different sets at each uh, iteration or each step when you switch the traits. Hence, the uh, contradiction can never uh, take place. Right. So I, I think this this is just this is a, some like kind of this is a quibble that doesn't seem to be really like grounded in anything really important. I think like there's no issue with saying that there's there's a contradiction. You don't have to every like let's say every like um, femtosecond. It's a new set if we're using time as our metric here. Right. That doesn't we don't really need to do that. The same way if we're making an argument, say in the real world, and you know. I say like, oh, you owe me money. And you're like, oh, actually, you know, I owed you money 10 minutes ago. I'm a different person now. My traits are different. So, you know, like it's, I'm not sure, I'm still not 100% following the argument. Well, it's not uh, if any changes we met. I, I'm, I'm just talking about the actual trait switching. When you switch the traits, now you're really referring to a new set. Would you agree with that or not? Well, what do you mean new set? Like uh, once you... Uh, if you ch switch any traits, I mean, uh, th then you're referring to a new thing. I mean, I, I guess it could still be categorized as a human or not, right? But you're still referring to a new set. And the but if we're talking about beings, then we're talking about the same being, right? Because this argument's running with two beings, right? So unless you want to argue right. for a kind of meteorological nihilist view here, it, it doesn't seem to work because we're talking. The argument is about two. We're comparing, say, humans and I don't know, pigs or whatever the arguments run with, right? Yeah. So if you want to make that claim with respect to the argument, it sounds like you need to take a pretty strong, hardcore uh, view on muriology and personal identity. Um, well, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I'm just uh, doing in reference to set theory the way I Wait, have why used is that it. theory relevant here, though? Well, because you're not talking about the same set. I mean, that's the simple way of there's, there's, it. Just, there's no fact of the matter on this, right? Again, no one, no one argues about are we are we ontologically creating a new set? You know, that's not a thing that people discuss. Oh, oh sorry, so sorry, you missed like... the previous discussion. Uh, that was the issue of trying to formalize it into a a contradiction using inference, and that's why I'm uh, bringing it up. Wait, sorry, what's the what was the previous conversation? Well, the previous conversation was about uh, that uh, some aspect, the more specifically the assumption box in name the trade could be uh, formalized and. Uh, inference rule can be applied to and the, then the reference theory had, was brought up and that's why i'm talking about it now but you might disagree with the uh, with the actual uh, usage of set theory you might refer to something else now uh, when you switch the traits though yeah i'm sorry i don't i'm not super familiar with the argument so uh, yeah but i mean the, the whole thing started with the assumption box in version 5 of name the trait. Uh, but uh, that was quite a, that was quite a, quite a long conversation. Wait, so ask, uh, are you still there? Yeah, what's up? That's a no. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't have my oh, yeah. uh, activation on. Yeah, what's up? So, like, I'm. I'm. Am I understanding this argument right, or I'm, I'm not just because I, I feel like this seems like a, a an argument about nothing, which is why I'm rather confused. I'm, <laughs> I'm so sorry for doing this to you. I feel like a horrible person. Um. Yeah. Well, I mean, basically, what's happening is here. I'll copy paste you the. Um. No, it's probably up here, higher up. So I'll, I'll show you what happened here. You're going to have to give me a minute to dig up the argument, though. I mean, it's fine. If it's like too much work, it's not a problem. No, but... no, no. It's all good. Just um, just give me a minute. You, you might just have to bear with me, though. I'll take like, you know, a minute or two to find it. Wait, Jen, did you see what I said in the other server? Uh, no. I'm like walking right now. It's super fucking windy, so I can barely hear anything. OK. I can read it. Um, it's got to be up here somewhere. I think Meg just put it up. Um, yeah, but I, I don't know if she put the first one or the second one. Um, yeah, okay, here we go. 
All right. So are you, you said you're on your phone, right? So you probably can't really see. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of hard. It's like shady. I'm like walking right now too, and it's windy, so it's like kind of hard to read. But I can, I can slowly kind of. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me just copy paste this. Okay. Okay. Then I just need to put the form there. P implies Q. P. Therefore, Q. Okay, now let me find my way back down. Okay, uh, here, I'll also, I'll put a break in there so it's clear where the arguments switch over. Okay, so there's two arguments here, right? So the first one is just name the trait, basically. So it just says, if your view affirms, it's just a modus ponens, if your view affirms a given human is trait equalizable to a given animal while retaining moral value, then your view can only deny the given animal has moral value on pain of contradiction. The second premise is just that your view does affirm that a given human is trait equalizable to a given animal while retaining moral value. And then the conclusion is just therefore your view can only deny the given non-human animal has moral value on pain of contradiction. Now he's trying to challenge the first premise of that. So we came up with a second deduction just to, as if like it's even necessary to demonstrate something that basic, but we did it anyway. And we just put a hypothetical syllogism there, right? So we just took that first premise, we broke it into two, <clears throat> we made, um, we made the first uh, proposition, or yeah, the first proposition P, uh, uh, the, sorry, we took P from that and we took Q and we basically just made Q into R and then um, uh, we, we put a different Q in the middle. So we transformed it into a hypothetical syllogism whose conclusion is just the first premise of the deduction. So he's doubting the first premise. We gave an argument whose conclusion is the first premise. So. Then we gave him this argument, right? And I won't read through the whole thing, but the first premise of it is just that if your view affirms a given human is trait equalizable to a given non-human animal while retaining moral value, you then your view affirms the given non-human animal has moral value. So all that saying, right, is just, if, if it's the case that we equalize all the traits and values there, then the animal also has value. It can't be that all the traits are equal, but they differ with respect to some trait like value, right? If we equalize all the traits, and value is still there. That would mean that they both have value. Do you uh, do you track me on that? Right, I got that. Now, right. now he's he's doubting that argument? for whatever reason. I, no, I, don't, I, 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 I sorry. What did you say? I have no idea what he's attempting to say. I don't think he's making sense, but he's attempting to doubt that somehow. That's more or less where we are. He's trying to do something with personal identity, saying if you switch an element of the set, the set just being the set of all the traits, then it's not the same person. But why does it matter? Well, uh, and and in, also just in, just also please notice how that's irrelevant, right? You could say you, you could say it becomes a different um, it has a different identity with every modification to the set, right? That's not a problem because that's not where the contradiction comes from. The contradiction no, exactly, comes, right? That's what, right. I trying, that's what I was trying to get at. I'm confused by how there's a contradiction still, even if we grant it. Right, because the the contradiction that this view is trying to kind of like get to, right, is uh, um, my my view. That is it. What it's showing is just that. Uh, it, it can't be the case that we say that all of the uh, traits are equalized uh, and value remains, nope. right? Because that's going to imply that the animal has value. Do you track me that far? If all the traits are equalized right. and value is retained, then the animal has value. That's just what it means for the traits to be equalized. Follow me on there? Yeah, yeah, sure. So from there, if you were to then say the given non-human animal doesn't have value, you'd just be contradicting yourself. Right. That's all my view saying. Now, he, he's trying to. He's, equal, now I, he's he's in? what he's trying to do is go on some weird straw man about somehow if during the modification process where you change where you're switching the traits over if it's a different object at different instances as if that's somehow going to have any impact on whether P one is true or not. So that that's the rough outline. Did that answer like kind of what you're asking, uh, Jen? Yeah, yeah. So okay. to the person I was talking to before, let me let me just make sure I understand this. So let's suppose we have X and Y, and Y is value and X doesn't, they share different proper traits, right? And then suppose we create a new entity, Z, right? And we've, we take all of the X, the one without any uh, value, and we take and switch the, the traits around so that it's the exact same as the one in Y, right? Would you agree that they, that also has value, Z and Y? Sorry, are you asking me? Yeah, yeah, I was asking you. Sorry. 
So forget, you know, forget staying with the same set. Suppose we construct a new set. So we start with two and we have a third one. And the third one has all the traits of uh, the one that has value. Would you say the new one has value? Uh, well, I mean, uh, if I was going to be a, a carnist in this situation, then yeah. Okay, so wait, I, I'm, I'm confused. What's the problem? Then? Uh, yes, yes. You can right. say that it has new value. But uh, let me just uh, affirm something quickly because um, there's a confusion between the way you ask yourself uh, frame the original uh, disagreement. Uh, uh, if are you reading premise one? If your view affirms a given human, uh, do you, can you see this? Uh, give me one second. Let me show my. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So my, my question is that um, when when the phrasing of human is trait equalizable. That, yeah, I, I literally just wanted to ask this simple question just to get it out there. If this means that the human uh, and the animal is in a trait equalization process and not the fact that there are already equalizing traits. traits. So the way you view this uh, framing is that uh, there Wait, is a process. Um, why, why is that relevant though? Like what is, what is, what's the difference between one or the other? Why does it matter? Well, I mean, this was uh, before when he wanted to uh, ask me if um, something has and does not have more value, if it's a contradiction. And this is, I just wanted to get it out there. There was a huge leap, you know, uh, I uh, miss uh, an irrelevant question, you know, because my whole question was that uh, when the phrasing human is trait equalizable, that there is a process of, uh, that's undergoing there, not that the fact they already have equalizing traits. If AI is still listening, you know, this this was my question, which he refused to answer. But uh, going back to the discussion about uh, X, Y, and Z uh, regarding new sets, um, you asked me if this new set Z has uh, also moral value once you have uh, switched some traits, right? Right. And and I and I answered with a yes, it could be have a moral value. But uh, I would also say that um, this is actually going down kind of on, to an argumentation of uh, which uh, which I did not really want to go into when it talks about name the trait because I really I understand name the trait uh, uh, and this criticism about set theory you know we can go down the route but this uh, con this discussion really confirms again that there is no. Um, there, there's no inference rules that actually lead to a, into a contradiction. Would you say that there's an inference rule that leads to a contradiction? In what this, do you mean by uh, inference rules? Uh, by inference rules, I mean um, a proof rule used to... Yeah, sure. Uh, what would that inference rule be to... I mean, it seems to me that the, the premise I'm looking at, the first one, or I think it was the first one, can be perfectly captured in any sort of formal system or proof system. It's what's the, I don't understand what the issue is here. Oh, really? Uh, what, uh, what, uh, do you have a reference, uh, like a reference to a, uh, to a video or like a site that uh, talks about this when you specifically about the contradiction in sets, when you switch elements or, or something in the like? Wait, wait, okay, hold on. You're losing, you're losing me with the set theory now. What does the set theory have to do with our formal system that we're putting this argument in? Oh, when you say formal system, do you mean that? I just mean a, log a logical system with, it depends, you can, it doesn't matter what it is, a Hilbert style, or Axiom style, it makes no difference, right? You can, it seems perfectly uh, writable, quote unquote, in any system. There's no, there's no obvious issue here. Like we don't have to appeal to like classes or some weird MBG system or anything. We can just, it seems perfectly straightforward to me. Well, I mean, uh, basically just assuming that that's true, right? Not that you're proving that. You know, you, you don't prove that implication. Like Wait, uh, somebody so assuming said, what's true, sorry. I mean, the argument hinges upon that, that premise, that uh, implication uh, is true. That, that you don't really prove uh, uh, this claim. Yeah, I'm not 100% I'm not following. Uh, like, would you say that? Would you say that uh, P1 can be approved uh, with the uh, lemmas or uh, tautologies or any other way that uh, this 
uh, premise can be deduced from other premises. Or wait, so you can you can easily formalize that first premise with just basic predicates, right? You don't need anything hardcore for that. Can you formalize it with predicates? Yeah, I I I'd gladly do it. I'm just walking outside, so I can't really type it out, but I'd gladly do it. Oh it's yeah, no problem. problem. But the, when you say you can formalize it with predicates, uh, do you mean that you apply uh, inference rules on predicate uh, formulas? Yeah. Or what do you mean by that? Just in first order logic, like super basic first order logic, nothing difficult at all. Predicate logic, then. Right. And uh, how uh, how would you formulate that? Right. Just give me a second. Let me get home, and I'll write it out for you. <laughs> yeah. Sure. No problem. Okay, so uh, just to be clear now, somebody saying that um, it can be uh, formalized, but earlier I heard that um, yeah, basically a linguistic explanation of why this is true, you know. But uh, I mean, you can they... have both, right? Like, there's no issue with most people, for instance, don't want to formalize certain long arguments because they end up being extremely just ugly course, to look at, yeah. right? There's no issue. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the whole. Uh, I guess tension started about uh, whether it's a formal argument or not, you know, and uh, <laughs> that that's how it got into it, you know. Right. But yeah, I mean, if you say there's a inference rule, uh, can you just uh, name the inference uh, or like the specific well, inference? How, in how would we just do this? How would we just do this? We take um, that first premise we want to write out as say we define some predicate on sets right if you, if you want to use set like doesn't make yeah. a difference um and we say that for um we define some predicate for say um holding some property or holding some set of properties we define something for value and then we can write out the premise in, in, in the sense of saying that if two um uh two sort of entities or whatever hold the same predicate with respect to properties then they have to hold the same with respect to value right which is like, it was just a trivial statement, right? Because value just fall under, or I shouldn't use properties since Ask said not to use that, but uh, what, traits or whatever, right? And that's just a trivial problem. That's a trivial statement, right? Um, um, would, also, sorry, I, 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 don't, I don't want him to score a, a cheap point here. He's also, uh, Genevieve, he's trying to get you to say that what was written above was not a formal argument. The two arguments I gave um, you don't have to go over them right now, but assuming that they are in the form P implies Q, P therefore Q, and P implies Q, Q implies R, therefore P implies R, they obviously would be formal arguments. Right. I, well, I went, it depends what you mean. Like, if you mean formal as I don't want to see a single common English word, then... It's, yep. Yeah, they, they are, they, sorry, they are formalized to that degree. Every single word in the proposition is identical in every instance. Right, right. So I will say that I, I don't understand. I still don't understand why this is like. Why would you not think it's not formalizable in like a strict sense, right? Like that argument that was posted is totally fine. There's no issue with it. Like when I looked at it just a second, I totally followed it. I had no issue with it, right? And, so I don't understand and just, what we would. No, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But I, uh, just to be clear for this person, it already is formalized. I mean, if an argument just granting the fact that the wording is consistent throughout it and it's in modus ponens or hypothetical syllogism form, then obviously that's a formal argument. I'm not talking about the format, the well, modus one, ponens one, format. One second, one second. I just want to be clear about that with Jen. Right, so I think, uh, the, the I, I don't know who I'm talking to. I'm sorry, what's your name, the other guy? Uh, Chris, you can call me Chris. Okay, yeah, so I think what Chris is saying, he's, he wants formal by by his definition means like instead of say writing out you know socrates is a man all men are mortal blah 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 he wants it he doesn't want to see any english words he just wants to see pure predicates right yep, i did i did that below i wrote i wrote just the uh the logical form just writing well not predicates i wrote in prop logic. oh i must have missed that though yeah no it's like here look i'll just literally go grab it again just give me one second um if you just look at um if you just look down here so not only is the actual natural language in the argument totally formalized in the sense of every instance of P is written exactly identical, right? Um, there's actually just the form in algebra, just in prop logic linked below or written below, right? So you can see the first one is just a modus right. ponens. The second is just a hypothetical syllogism. Now, I won't force you to like read over all the wording right now, but assuming there is no variance in the language, P is always P, Q is always Q. 
you would in fact agree that that is a formal argument. Yeah, well, yeah. So I, I would be fine with that. Okay. I, I don't know what the I don't know what Chris exactly wants. No, it's it's not the format, the modus. Uh, actually, it's it's not modus ponens. What is it, barber or something? I'm not sure about the, the name of the inference rule, but uh, when I'm talking about when I say formal, no, I'm wait, wait, what are you, one sec, one second, what what the fuck are you talking about? It's not modus barbara. That is that's modus ponens right there. Modus barbara is for syllogistic logic. This is this is improp logic. That's modus ponens and that's hypothetical syllogism. Yeah, well, what did you call the P? It why, why, Q, why, Q. why are you talking about modus barbara? That's that's no, a whole other sure kind the, of logic. Hold on. Yeah, no, I'm talking about the, what is the naming of P implies Q, Q implies R. Do you know the name that's of, of that? They, they, call, they call that one hypothetical syllogism, but like people don't okay. pay that much attention to the, the names of them, dude. It's like they just write the argument and see if it's valid. But yeah, that's yeah, a, yeah, but that, that's a, yeah. I've seen the in style of the in propositional style, but I didn't know the name of this no, inference rule. Yeah, no, mo modus. It's called hypothetical syllogism. Mo right? Modus Barbara, that's syllogistic logic. That's like, that's not the same kind of logic. That's like when you yeah. have categorical syllogisms, when you're like all ARB, all BRC, therefore all ARC. Right? That's not, it's not the same yeah, thing yeah, as true. prop logic. No, I was referring, but uh, okay, it's called a hypothetical hypothetical syllogism. Um, so this is I'm not criticizing the that the, if it's a valid the inference rule or not. You know, that this is not my uh, when I say formal. You know, uh, I'm asking like, is there a way to prove p one, uh, or are you just assuming that it's true? Well, it's a premise, right? You have to argue against it or for it. Yeah, uh, but uh, this could be if you assume that it's true, then yeah, I, I would. I agree that uh, well, everything no plays out is fine, true. But... It just it seems right, right? Well, like, this, I think this is the part. You know? At one point, you agreed with it, right? Didn't you say that you agreed that Z would have this, the value as well? Well, this is what I wanted to... Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, referring back to Z, uh, if it still has a more value. But uh, can you show me the, the contradiction part? How, how is it that uh, two sets has... And, and it's kind of like we're talking about it, uh, that a set has... Uh, value more of value, you know, but uh, I'm not sure if we can. Well, then, it. We would just say that it has a trait that corresponds with moral value, or the trait of having moral value, or something like that. Uh, yeah. Um, but wait, that, so that where, kind of you know, are you are you asking where the contradiction is between me saying two sets, or you don't have to use sets, whatever, two uh, things have the same traits, but they also don't have the same traits? Well, I, I want to ask you, uh, what formal system? Any. Uh, that's, just, you... that's a straightforward contradiction, right? Well, well, I, I think you refer to like a natural language perspective, or like in in in, in language view, or like, uh, or is that trite? Or well, no, no, no. Suppose we have. Um, how about we just do it this way? Suppose we have two sets, right? And we have the same. Um, traits in both of them right you would agree with that right yeah right and so but you're also agreeing that they don't have the same trait and that one is moral value and the other doesn't assuming i'm not saying you're saying this but suppose we were trying to find a contradiction right so you yeah. the person the hypothetical person would say they both share the same traits but at the same time they don't share the same traits right well uh, if we talk about in um in, in on the step it, in the name the trait when you have a when you created this new set c right uh, you, you're saying that uh, this would produce at some iteration in this process it would produce a a set a so-called set where it has and does not have more value am i following you well no no, no. we the, the the argument says that it does have moral value once we finish this whatever the process is but what i'm asking is you you were asking how is there like a a, a contradiction and i was just saying there, they, there's a straightforward contradiction. They would say, well, let's suppose we define some predicate as having the same traits, right? So some P predicate is true when two sets have the same traits, right? So you're saying, or the, not you, but some person is saying that it's both the case that P, and this is a, this would be a, a, a dual uh, predicate. So there'd be two sets we input, right? So we have P, what was it? Uh, y and Z is true, and it's the negation is true as well, since they don't have the same traits. So there's a straightforward contradiction. Yeah, I mean, uh, I would love to see this 
uh, typed out so I can follow more clearly. Uh, but wait, wait, so like I can, I, can, saying... I can slow it down. It's just super straightforward, right? We're just defining a predicate. Well, it's not that. It's not that. It's it's the citation. If you're referring to an inference rule, in are you talking first in predicate logic now, or what? Form yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm using a predicate, right? It's a okay. straightforward predicate. Yeah. So okay, so go on. Some predicate p we're defining, and it's true when we have two sets that have the same traits, right? So it would be the case that p x and z or y and z, whatever I said, right? Yeah. Right, and so you're asking where's the contradiction if I said that's not the case, right? But it's a straightforward contradiction in saying P, uh, Y, Z, and negation P, Y, Z, right? That's a, that's a contradiction. You yeah. agree? Yeah, okay. Right, so where's the issue? Now, how do you go to that uh, predicate formula? How do you derive those two? Because right now it's, that's just it how seems we, like that's, that's how we do predicate logic. We define predicates for something. Like if, if I'm looking at, for instance, um, like Godel's formulation of some argument in like his... Uh, modal ontological argument he defines perfection as a, a predicate i wouldn't be like wait how did you get to that like it just it just we grant that that's the, how the argument is run right now we could say that there's no such thing as that predicate there's no such thing as traits which would be argue which would be attacking that premise for instance right but if you're not making that argument then you should just accept that such a predicate exists uh, i'm still kind of confused on how that um negation the the p predicate and the negation of the p predicate how does that uh, how do you infer those uh, those two but I, I don't understand what you're asking it's like if if i if i defined if i if i was making the all men are mortal socrates is a man uh and socrates is a mortal argument and you were like well you know how are you defining the, the and i suppose i i, I uh, formalized it with the predicate of mortal right and you're like wait how did you get this predicate of mortal where did you get that from right like it, it's the question doesn't almost make sense to me well, I mean, it seems like it comes out of thin air, you know, because when I, uh, you're familiar with inference rules, right? In, yeah, I know if it, I know what inference rules but, are, but, but it's, predicate it's not coming out of thin air, right? It's literally the argument. We're just formalizing what the argument is. You're asking, like, where does these premises come from? Ask, you know, uh, ask you, you ask brain, right? Or whoever came up with this argument, like, look and put the brain under a microscope and you'll figure out where it came from, I guess. But that's, it seems totally irrelevant. Well, I mean, I still don't. Uh, if you if you understand like inference rule in empiric logic, do, are you familiar with like the for all in elimination and existential? Yeah, those are, those are quantifiers. Yeah, I know what quantifiers yeah. are. So this is a type of uh, a type of formulation that I'm looking for. Like, how do you derive? If you're familiar with the well, what the hell is it called? The uh, the stepping wise, you know, like you you produce uh, you apply one inference rule to a set of premises and the other. So Kinda we like can. The, like okay, let me let, 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 let me baby. I'm let me put it this way. So for the first premise, we might just do it as sort of universal operator, two sets x and y. If and then we have a, a material conditional. If um, p the predicate we defined x and y, um, then you know the consequent would be then p x and y, which is a trivial statement, right? We're just saying that for all sets if we take two sets and they have the same properties and they have the same properties it's a trivial statement you would agree with that right uh, so you had a predicate that takes in two sets right and, uh, like then the, yeah and uh, uh, it's true if they share the same elements yeah the same them. traits or whatever yeah exactly okay and then uh, what was the other uh, the other part i missed well, so wait, did, so I started off with just the a universal quantifier over some domains, say all sets of all domains. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Technically, it's not all all sets, but you know, forget it, right? So over some domain, we're using a universal quantifier, and we're saying for all uh, two sets we take, if we if the p is true for those two sets, then p is true for those two sets, right? We're saying something trivial that if they share the same traits, they share the same, they share the same traits, right? Uh, when you say, yeah, I agree with it, but uh, just uh, the formaliz formalization, if P, how did you say it? If P uh, isn't using a quantifier P, it, this no, would no, be no, easier no, if no, you no, type P it is not a actually. quantifier. We're just using the universal quantifier. Yeah, for all, uh, for all uh, what? For, for all, all, the, all the sets in our domain of sets, if we take two, two of them and, we, and P is true for two of them, then P is true for two of them, right? Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. Okay. Okay. And then the... Right. So we're we're making some headway then. So if you you agree with that, so it's, it's a trivial statement, right? Yeah, I just don't. Uh, I'm not familiar with the the formalization here. 
it kind of seems well, like my point here is that you agreed with it even though you have no problem with me introducing p as a predicate right so what's the issue in the other example where i'm saying something also trivial trivially false that is wait so that is the formalization just using that predicate uh, with the two sets well, no, no no so my point was before i was formalize quote unquote formalizing where the contradiction was using that predicate right and you're like well i don't understand where you're getting this predicate from. So I just, I made, I stated a trivial statement with the predicate using a, a quantifier over some domain and you were like, oh, that's fine. So my point is that there's, there's no problem with the predicate in itself. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, if I talk, uh, if you wanna, if we talk about it in real world, I might disagree, but yeah, go on just for the sake of argument. Uh, I agree with, if we talk right, so, about so just- So you agree uh, there's a contradiction, then, right? Well, well, I mean, now uh, I'm I'm not sure how you formalize it. Still, I never heard this type. But like, I'm I'm looking at this is like, like literally a, just basic first order logic. Like first day for this very very straightforward first order. There's nothing hard going on here at all. Just I'm literally just formalizing a basic idea in the premise. Uh, are you? Can you type this out uh, in the chat? Uh, yeah, I'm not near. I can't really do it. I can't like do it on my phone right now. But if you can wait a little like later, I can do it. No. Hey, Jen, I actually I can write it for you if you. Okay, if thanks. You want. Appreciate you, it. Yeah, I don't I don't know for it for a start of this. You're just gonna have to tell me what symbols to use. But I have them all here. Right. Right. So wait. So which one did you want to see, um, uh, Chris? Did you want to see where the contradiction was with the predicate? Uh, yeah. Uh, exactly. Right. So, how about how we just combine the two and say that? Um, uh, let me let me see. Put a way to put this. Um, okay, hold on. So, how about this? We have the universal quantifier. Okay. And then we just have uh, x comma y. X. Which will just represent. Y. Those just represent two sets in our domain of sets. Mm -hmm. And then p. Uh, parentheses, open parentheses, x comma y, close parentheses, mm -hmm. um, and then conjunction. Mm, one second. Yep. Then conjunction negation p, uh, parentheses x comma y. Okay, one second. Um, let me just find negation. Negation uh, what now? P, uh, and then open parentheses x y, like before, just yep. with the negation. Yep. And then write a, a material conditional. Or entailment. Mm -hmm. um, one second. Yep. Material condition. And then just just a, a symbol for a, a contradiction. Oh, I don't have the the one symbol I don't have on here. Let me. It's, it's all good. The... You just write contradiction. It makes no difference, right? Like it's just. My yeah. point oh, is that... he'll he'll probably try to literally pick on it for not having the contradiction <laughs> symbol. No, I'll dude, get I'll get on. the tautology symbol. Like I don't even care. I'm. I'm still not 100 percent sure why this is relevant but I, i'm there's no problem <laughs> like do well it has to do with the uh, if you're gonna say me in the trade as a formal argument i mean if you can't prove it formally then uh, obviously it's not um okay so, so i see it here now i put that in text i hope that's how uh how you're picturing it there jen uh one second let me just, my phone's like super fucking fucked up one second Yeah, that looks that looks that looks fine. I uh, Chris, I hope you're not gonna be like, oh, the, you need you need uh, parentheses to make it unvague because you know, hopefully you understand what it's saying, right? You don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really no, I see right now. Um, uh, let me. So just what part of that would you second. disagree with? Because it seems to me a trivial statement, right? Wait, where was it written out? Uh, I think uh, asked did it in, in Errol, general. I can I can write it again. And when you asked if he was going to pick on parentheses, are you talking about just a big set around the whole uh, expression before the material conditional? Uh, no, I was talking about before the um, right the after the first y. But that's that's it's not it's not really not an issue. Okay. Well, here, I'll put that again as you had it. 
So, uh, Chris, did you, did you, is there any part of that you find uh, contentious or problematic? Because it seems to me very straightforwardly trivial. Yeah, wait, what? Isn't, what's confusing about this? Uh, well, I'm asking Chris. Uh, no, I mean, uh, right now at first sight, you know, it seems uh, uh, to be fine, right? Uh, I'm just looking through my... Uh, 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 I have um, some note, notes when I did a predicate logic course. But sure. yeah, I mean, if you, the way uh, at first sight, yeah, I would say uh, it's, it, it seems fine. Okay, cool. It's a so, truth statement. Okay, great. So, or it, it leads to a contradiction, more like. Right, so you agree there is a contradiction there, which seems to mean that was those whole thing, like the, the whole like misunderstanding or the kind of discussion about sort of whether that actually leads to a contradiction. Well, now my, now my question would be like, how does this relate to switching trades? Because right now you're saying that, uh, right, how is this actually the, the, the switching trades part, you know, how does this uh, jump in? Well, it seems to me that that's just, we're just formalizing the idea that if we have um, sort of uh, what I think was X and Y in the, in the argument, but if we have two sets, um, X and Y, and we flip the traits and so on, we have a contradiction, right? And if you're asking about, you know, the time component, then I th again, I, I don't think that's particularly relevant. It's like, if we if I was bringing up like an argument, like, I don't know, like a, like a P zombie argument, right? And I was like, well, you know, are the P zombies happen like existing right now, like in a possible world, like what's going on? Like, it, it just doesn't seem relevant to me whether or not this is happening over an hour, or if this happened instantaneously, like, I just don't see how that's relevant. Well, I mean, I would say that uh, right now you made, you're making a statement, uh, and the, the statement refers to actually when the traits, when the when the elements in the sets are actually equalized. It seems like am I am I wrong in saying that, or are you saying that the, the when the, the trait equalization process it can occur if this is even possible thing to occur? Wait, could you say the last part? I, I missed the last part. Yeah, um, uh, so like right now, this predica predicate formula, it seems that uh, this refers to a contradiction when the, uh, when the traits have uh, been equalized or you're actually talking about the same uh, set. But let me ask you that if you're in the process of equalization, uh, th there's also, uh, is there, a, can the contradiction be produced from a process rather than the final step, if you understand what I'm saying. I can rephrase that. Yeah, I'm not 100% following. I don't know if anyone else is, and they can just explain it to me, but I'm not 100% understanding what you're saying. Yeah, I'm going to try. Um, uh, so when you're doing trait equalization, right, and you reach from uh, the, the, you have the last step, right, and you have the step before this last step, uh, can you, can you reach, because right now the way the formula uh, is notated, the way I read it is the, uh, the contradiction is just at the end part, right? But can you reach, can you make an inference from the uh, very, the step from the, the, <laughs> the um, not the last step, but the step before that? The, Wait, what's the step before that? Uh, if you have n steps, right? The, and the n minus one, I would say. The, Oh, yeah. What does that mean? Like, uh, it seems to me the, the arguments, the contradiction is happening at the end, right? Like, we're not talking about, like, there's a whole process, I suppose, in between where the person, the interlocutor, interlocutor like, tries to give a trait, right? But I, I don't think that's part of the argument. Well, that, that's my question to you. Can you infer this? Because that's the implication. That is, that is what the, but the way I read the implication is a human is trait equalizable. That means that this whole process can be done, not, not just that. Uh, that the contradiction can be uh, inferred in the trait equalization, not that just there is just a contradiction, if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, maybe it's just late, but I, I just, I'm not understanding what you're saying. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, sorry. Um, but I mean, the, I mean, the way I see it right knows, now... ...knows better, maybe he understands better what you're saying. I just, I'm not 100% tracking. Yeah, I can try to rephrase. I mean, the way I see this predicate formula right now is just... a. And contra uh, contradiction by the part, but I, 
I'm, I'm not quite sure I, I see the trade equalization, how that uh, can be played into this. Right. I yeah. I'm. I'm. Maybe I'm just misreading the premise, but the premise to me just sounds like it's saying something trivial. So it's it sounds like you're you're taking a different approach to it. But I mean, I I, I just don't get. I just don't understand the point. Uh, well, my my point is uh, this um, this predicate former, right? It's not. It doesn't really refer to that implication. It is this formula is kind of pointing to something else. Uh, and more specifically, it's pointing to when the uh, trade equalization process is already done. It's already talking about like when you have equalized two things that uh, this thing has and does not have some type of predicate, predicate in this case, uh, moral value, right? But my point is um, how can uh, it doesn't really capture the implication uh, uh, the way I see it right now? I could, I could be wrong, right? But uh, I, I don't see how this uh, predicate formula it's only capturing the the contradiction part at the very end but it doesn't really capture the wait wait sorry isn't wasn't this entire discussion about the contradiction wasn't wasn't what i was told was that you just didn't think there was a contradiction right so that's why i'm like confused with this how we're we're, we're removing now well uh, yeah uh, the assuming if i say this predicate formula that is true right the least contradiction how does this dif this relate to the uh, the switching phase part this is why i don't i still don't kind of see Wait, hold on. Let me let me just scroll up to the actual uh, text. One second. Let me just look at this again. Okay, so we're talking about the, oh, God damn it, the phone keeps going down when someone types something, sorry. So you're saying you're talking about if, um, fuck, hold on a sec. Can't even look uh, at it. Okay, if so your if you view affirms a given human trait, yeah. a given human is trait equalizable to a given non-human while retaining moral value, then your view affirms the given non-human animal as moral value, right? Wait, you still there, Chris? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Wait, so you, that's what we're talking about, right? That the first premise. Of course, yes. So it, it does. The my reading of it is straightforwardly saying that if you're allowing this whole process of happen, this whole thing we're talking about, where we take and flip uh, and move traits between, say, new sets, it doesn't matter if it's new or not, then this the the thing we just formalized, this contradiction would occur because we would be saying that. They have the same traits, but don't have the same traits. Being moral value, being the same trait, right? So, where's the issue? Uh, is the is the predicate P that was if the two sets are equal, right? If they share the same traits. Yeah. So it it literally just refers to just the process of them being the same already, not any trait equalization. Right, the that's, process that's, that's the beginning of the argument, right? the, the premise. It's saying, given you accept that we can do this, that we can construct, you know, and do this trade switching thing, then this, this you have to accept this, or otherwise this contradiction occurs, right? That's that's what that's my reading. That's what I'm reading it as. Yeah, but um, right right now the way it is, you, you're just saying that they already are equalized, not that they are different from the beginning. No, we're not saying that. It's a, it's a conditional, right? We're not saying is that they are equalized. We're just saying if they if they become equalized, then they must share the same traits and they can't one can't have value and the other can, right? Uh, I mean, uh, sorry if I'm misreading or misunderstanding, but you're saying that the human is trait equalizable. That means that they, they, they share that that um, they share different set uh, elements elements in the set from the beginning and 
we can switch the elements to become equalized. Not that they are equalized in the beginning or not equalized. Do you follow? Well, you, right. <laughs> Again, this I, I don't I don't see how this is relevant, right? We're just saying that let's grant that we can do this equalization process, right? That's the part of the argument. And it's saying, if it were the case, we're, again, we're using conditional, if it were the case that they share the same properties, this contradiction would occur if we'd said they didn't, one had moral value, one didn't, right? There's, what, like, I don't understand what the issue is here. Well, well not, not that they are equalized, but uh, that, that, that they... No, no if, if they if, were equal. I would say that the predicate formula would more resemble the actual implication if P, not that P, the predicate was referring to that the sets are already equal, uh, but more like if they, if if they're not equal, but you can actually switch the traits. You know, they, there's no process in. Wait, wait. So sorry. Let me let me. Are you saying that you just reject that there's any such thing as sort of moving traits and so on? Is that what you're saying? Well, I mean, in terms of predicate logic, what would you, what would that operator be? I mean, there's unless you're just stating. Sorry. Sorry, I, I couldn't capture you. No, 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 I was saying that that's not a thing. There's no, there's no operator or anything about trait equalization, right? That's just fucking. If we, if we wanted to, if we wanted to, for instance, f a quote unquote formalize the property of allowing trait equalization, we could just come up with some predicate for it, right? But, yeah. you know, there's no reason we need to, like, I, I just, I'm, again, I'm not, like, totally understanding here. Like, it seems like this is just really relevant to the argument. Well, I mean, my uh, objection is that uh, it does, that predicate formula uh, is, doesn't really capture the, the way it is argued and even in the trait uh, equalization video, the way the name the trait is argued, you know, it, you only capture that last part when the the two sets are literally the same thing. Okay, wait. So, hold on. Um, would you agree if I said that uh, the first premise is saying that given that we can, given we grant that equalization is possible, then if and then the rest you of the talk thing about the main argument, list, right? Sorry, sorry, what? Are you talking about the main argument or the? No, no, the first premise, the the, the premise we're talking about. Okay. Would you would you would you be okay with that? The thing we formalize, right? The, la the later part, and then before then, we just add this sort of extra caveat of given equalization is possible or that we can equalize or whatever, then this would be the case. Would you would you be okay with that? Uh, I mean, uh, sorry, can you rephrase that? Uh, I have another objection actually that I just uh, spotted. Uh, right. So, but, uh, what, I was, right what now, I was trying the, to get at was, if we just take the, the the previous formula and we just add to the beginning that, given it's possible for you know equal the equalization process to occur, then this and this, right? Uh, sorry, I'm. Uh, I can you rephrase that? I'm kind of. Um. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally just saying that we take what we have right now in the formalization, which you, which so far you said it looked fine, right? And all we're doing is we're adding to the beginning of that, that given that equalization is possible, then blah, 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 right? Uh, I'm talking about the process of equalization, you know, but uh, so I'm not sure. Are you saying that you're adding an extra predicate premise? The fact that uh, we, we, yeah, we, if you want, we can add an extra predicate for quote unquote equalizing or whatever, right? We can do that if you want. Yeah, sure. So okay. the two sets and uh, the two sets need to be equalizable. Sure, we can add that if you want. Yeah, I think this is where the disagreement will actually be more clear. Uh, would you say that uh, because right now, uh, the, I actually spotted something that uh, I, might, I think might be interesting, and it's the when you say x y is the same uh, the, the same set right here no, in no, this, no, no, no. Uh, they're not the same set if they're the same set uh, the predicate uh, the predicate is true if the x y is the same set right but they're not the same wait, set wait, from wait, the, hold on, hold on. the entire point was to take two different sets right and if they share yeah, yeah. the same traits uh, yes but, but wait what's the problem here? 
uh, the, the p predicate that uh, checks for if the x and y is the same set, right? Yeah, sure. Uh, yes. So would you agree that that predicate formula we that you that we wrote down that that only uh, talks about uh, the the, uh, the contradiction in the end part, like when uh, when the trait equalization has occurred? Uh, are we agreeing on that point? I, I still don't even understand what that means. To be honest, like it, it's of course it's happening. The whole point is that the premise is saying that you can't say that the two things the sets or whatever we're talking about, the entities, the beings, whatever, they can't have the same traits and at the same time, also one has moral value and the other doesn't. That's all we're formalizing here. Yes, correct. But how would you, uh, you're only saying that this is a contradiction, but how would you infer that this is the case if the equalization process uh, is taking place, right? So uh, how would you, um, basically, more specifically, uh, I'm referring to, we, I, I, I so suppose we start with two, sorry I don't want to interrupt but I, yeah, again no I'm, I'm not following here we have two sets right x and y originally and suppose we flip one trait right right uh, yeah. so but they, they don't say the same traits but we there's one there's been one change right what so we have this new again we can just call it a new t or whatever right what what's your point let's say we're at the new t what are you trying to say. Well, uh, I'm asking you, how do you derive it? Because how do you derive that predicate formula? Wait, what predicate formula? Uh, the end part, the the one we wrote down, the x, y. Uh, p, it's, it's, uh, we're just formalizing what the argument, the premise is saying, dude. It, it, it just we're yeah, just yeah. taking. The, but, so I don't understand your question. Okay, um, how do you uh, infer this predicate formula? How do you infer this? With my brain, right? I just took what the words were and I just formalized it. No, no, dude. I don't think you. Uh, I'm asking you, how do you infer this from the trait uh, equalization? Not that uh, this is a uh, that that the predicate formula is a contradiction, because I think we can agree that that's uh, dude. It just but, is the formalization, bro. I, I I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not trying to like accuse you of anything, but this is kind of a little ridiculous. Like I just it, it, it's just straightforwardly a contradiction. Like I just don't understand. No, I'm not uh, sorry. I'm not talking about if it's a contradiction. Or not. We can agree on that, uh, but I'm asking you, how do you uh, infer this contradiction from a trait equalization? This is not captured yet, as of yet. Dude, that's literally just the formal, the formalization in the chat. Yes, but, but the, 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 the trait equal. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like the trait yeah, equalization the part is not the trait captured. Equalization, right? Okay, okay. <laughs> Again, let's go back to what I was saying because this is about the equalization. Suppose we start the equalization process and we start originally at the beginning with X and Y, and they share different traits. Now let's go midway through before they're fully equalized and they, they're more they're closer than they were before, but they still share different traits, right? Uh, correct, but uh, this so is... So where's the, the problem? We, how, do you, how do you infer that contradiction? There, there is no the contradiction. The contradiction is at the end. That's the whole point. I, I know, I know, I know. But, but how do you... Uh, like? Um, this process of uh, equalizing traits, how do you infer that this contradiction would occur? Because right now, the only th thing that I've seen Wait, okay. that is formal. Sorry, Chris. I, I think we should just end this conversation because I'm, I'm just going to lose my temper and I, I don't want to yell. So I, I think we should just we should just end it right now, to be honest. Do, can I just ask you, do you understand my criticism? or I, 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 I like truly and it? utterly don't understand what you're saying and I, I don't think i will so i think it's better you just you talk to someone else and maybe they'll understand but i, I just don't again I, I you seem like a nice enough guy i don't want to yell at you but i'm just losing my temper here so i'm just let's just let's just end it okay yeah, can, sure. can, can you repeat your criticism real quick can... wait what's that no i was asking if he could repeat his criticism real quick oh me oh um uh an ethical guy oh yeah yeah, uh, basically, I'm asking uh, how um, that contradiction is uh, inferred from the trait equalization, not that that contradiction exists once the trait equalization is done. Basically, is there more uh, predicate premises or uh, such and such that uh, leads to 
that contradiction contradiction because that contradiction right now the the only thing it captures is the what uh, the end the end game of the trade equalization all that matters well whoa whoa okay whoa oh my god you said so much it's like weird because you're asking something really simple but you said so much that it made me think it wasn't simple um hold on a so you're saying that um the only, okay so you're saying that the contradiction happens only when they're trade equalized so why so how, how where are we getting the contradiction from if they're not trade equalized Uh, correct uh, the trade equalization process basically the whole uh, name the trade argument uh, no, no, no. hold on hold on hold on so so the reason okay look so the reason <laughs> so the reason we use the trade equalization process is to figure out um is to figure out at what point right um something uh, gains or loses the moral value thing right and with yeah, humans yeah, when they do the trade equalization right what we discover is that you know we give we give um uh, you know, when like let's say like we make the the human more like the animal, or the animal more like the human, right? We take away a leg from a human, right? It doesn't lose uh, moral consideration. We take an arm from a human, it doesn't lose moral consideration, right? So at, at what point, you know, um, like where is this line that we're drawing, right? And what we're trying to have you do is give us uh, like that the trait basically, right? We're trying to have you give us the trait that where you where you would draw that line. So we're not saying you have to equalize them both all the way, right? Because you can make like for example, like there, like when you say, um, like put it this way, when you say something is right, there, there's a lot of, like, I mean, what you could mean that it's just human DNA. Uh, you could refer to just, oh, on average has, you know, um, you know, two legs, two arms, or whatever, right? I'm so sorry, I'm playing league. Um, two. But I, I just don't understand. Like, what, what are you not getting? No, no, uh, I'm asking if there's a. If there's a way to capture the equalization part also into a uh, predicate formula that, that would say that that leads uh, to the contradiction formula that we saw earlier right now uh, right but right now uh, all that has been written is the is the predicate formula for um the i don't know do you see the predicate formula that's been no i'm not, I'm not seeing the logic thing and i don't really know how to how to read uh how to read logic so um but I mean, I don't know. Just okay. like what what he what, what he's telling you though, it sounds pretty like straightforward. Like, did you need it written out that way to understand it? Uh, no, I mean, I understand. Uh, uh, I've been watching Ask Yourself for quite some time, so I understand, oh, I understand. the linguistic uh, perspective, right? But uh, I'm I'm still like uh, iffy about the whole uh, that the trade like, equalization process can uh, lead to a contradiction right now. The only thing is that is stated is a uh, uh, is a p and its negation essentially by predicates, uh, but th there is no part that captures the whole uh, trade equalization process. Uh, am I making sense to you? I I guess I'm not understand. Are are you are you trying to say that um, there's no part of that? I don't know if you call it a formula that was written down that represents the equalization process. Uh, yeah, correct, kind of the, the step, you know, uh, as it is in the argument. Okay, can you tell me what, can you tell, look, since I can't read logic and you can, and other people here can, and they can tell you or me if you're wrong, right? Can you, can you read the logic and tell me what exactly it's saying? Uh, which one? The, the well, one the, one that, the one that you have a problem with. Uh, I don't necessarily have a problem with that one, but that's basically using a quantifier for uh, x and y, and it checks for all x and y uh, if the predicate p is true. And we noted that predicate p is checking whether uh, x or y uh, or and y, which are two sets, are equal and not equal. And this would be a um, this would uh, uh, entail a contradiction. That's how I'm reading it. I mean, look, I'm going to, I'm going to try to give you like a super like brain dead, like I'm not as smart as these guys, uh, version of something that's not a human and animal comparison. And I'm sure you'll, you'll get it right. But like, um, um, for example, uh, holy shit. Um, man, this is tough. Hold on. I'm trying to think of like a really, really, really like ridiculously easy way to put this. Um, 
but with use, right? Because anybody can say like, oh, well, if you get a, if you get like a ball and like a cube and you make the cube more like a ball continuously, at some point, it's just going to be a ball and you'll treat it as a ball unless there's something else about the ball that makes you treat it a certain way aside from it being a ball. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I understand that. Uh, oh, cars and drivability, uh, yeah. That example, right? But uh, my whole, uh, I mean, I, I, there's no formal way to put this. Uh, there's only a linguistic way has been said like multiple times. Hey, right? because, because I'm not like super smart. Does anybody think that that's like, um, is that like a really like valid criticism? Is there's just, is the linguistic not enough? Well, no, no, no. I, okay. I'm going to try one more time. All right. <laughs> because I've calmed down a little <laughs> bit. So I'm going to give it a shot. So are you, so bear with me here. Are you literally just saying that you want a way to formalize just the overall equalization process because we can do that although we're going to have to we're going to have to de go into like philosophy and talk about essences and so on because that's when because we we just probably need to do that right i mean we can do that sure if, well, if no, 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 i'm asking is that what you what you want are you basically trying to say like i want a way to i mean i'm asking the you. idea of taking one trait moving it and then seeing the kind of I, I don't know, the, the, the how close something becomes to the other thing. Is that what you're saying? Well, I, I'm not, uh, actually, I'm not interested in the philosophical. Uh, that way, I'm interested in the, in the formal sense, right? So, I mean, that's we what, have that's Sorry? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is that what you're just saying? You want a way to formalize the idea behind me being able to take, I don't know, uh, a trait and move it somewhere else, right? Correct. So, like, how about this? You write out whatever proposition you're trying to formalize, and I'll, I'll, if assuming I don't have to do a ton of work, I'll formalize it for you. Uh, yeah, in the chat, right? Yeah, yeah. Just write out whatever proposition or pre or premise or whatever you want formalized. Okay. It's essentially the, the if you see the do you see the P one again the. The if you yeah, yeah, yeah. Firms... I, I mean, I can't see it because people are like, I have to go on the chat and two ways to do that. But I know, I know, I know the idea. Uh, so if you like, if you can formalize the if your view. Sorry, let's just make a solution for that. Um, we'll just put it in somewhere other than general, so you guys can look at it. You just want the two arguments. Okay, cool. Is is that sorry? Is that what you wanted? Just the two, um, the argument, and then the sub argument for premise one. Sorry, uh, Jen. I'm just asking what it was that you wanted posted. No, no, no. He's he's just like what I was asking was what part does he want formalized, and he was just like, oh well, look at premise one. Okay. So I'm just yeah. Why well, don't here, guys? Let's keep our conversation all in general. But for these guys, I'm putting it in debate crucible one. So there's the argument, and whatever he wants formalized, I'm sure he can pick out for you. All right. Awesome. Okay. So. Uh, Chris, which which part of that do you want a formal formalize? Uh, basically, the, um, if you see, uh, if your view affirms a given human is trait equalizable to a given non-human while retaining moral value, uh, this uh, sentence or this proposition. That, that's just that's trivial, right? We just we define some predicate for equalizable. Yeah, are you just getting hung up on the fact that like you cannot actually equalize them physically? Wait a minute. What do you mean by uh, equalizable? Yeah, a set is equalized. Well, if I'm reading this right, it's just saying that if we grant that a human is equalizable to some other non-human animal, then blah 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 blah, while retaining moral value, I mean. So we can literally just construct some basic predicate to capture that, if that's what you're, if that's what you're asking. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, then you use a predicate for the set humans and say that this uh, set is equalizable uh, to another to, set. Yes, to over some domain. We, we, so we, yeah, we'd have to use different domains if we want to talk about strictly humans versus non-humans, sure. So we, we'd have to be clear about where, our, where, where we're quantifying into. Right. So yeah, you're right. Yeah. So you'd quantify over humans in one, and then non-humans in the other, and we define some predicate for equalizable. Okay. Uh, would you say that um, such a predicate makes sense to sets? 
in the sense yeah, that I mean I, I don't understand what that means. We we don't like set theory is is certainly utilized in 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 arguments and so on, but it, it doesn't really make much sense to say it doesn't make sense. Like we're just we're saying something non uh, not controversial here. Now you might say like um, if you wanted to argue about like um, personal identity, like I was mentioning before, and you're saying, well, hold on a second, you know, maybe we start with some set of traits and then we, we flip them around to say tomorrow, you know, I lose some skin cells. Can I make the argument I'm a different person? That's a whole different, that's a whole different thing, right? If that's what you're referring to. But in terms of just this formalization, there's nothing controversial here. Well, well I mean, uh, uh, I, I, if you say that there's a predicate that makes a set uh, trait equalizable, I, I just don't see how it, how is that Anyway, so and you know what a no predicate offense. is, no right? Offensive. Like w w yeah, predicates correct. aren't we don't like when you open like a, a like a logic textbook. P they don't. There's not a list of predicates you can use, right? People just come up with predicates, right? Yeah, of course. Right, right. But so using, I, I, what, sorry, go ahead. Uh, using predicate, uh, you're saying that uh, the element x now. If you're saying uh, the predicate p x, right? P x and x for, now for, is for, how about for equalizable. We use like a y for the predicate. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So you're saying that Y is a set, right? Uh, because that's so you, we talk about set and equalization. As you're saying, yeah. So, so we can take some sets of traits and say that um, quantifying into the domain of humans, um, and then quantifying for the other set into the non-humans. Then there's some predicate for equalizable that's true if and only if uh, that whatever that for the, the premise is saying that if they're equalizable, trait equalizable, or whatever the the word. Uh, okay, I, I, I think there's a, there's a flaw here. Of, I mean, if you say trait equalizable to a set, uh, you, you already talk about switching elements from a set or adding and removing, right? Because that's the whole trait equalization part. Wait, what, what is, why does it matter? I mean, I would see that um, you, you're breaking something, but... Uh, Wait, what am I breaking? I mean, what rule is ZFC is, am I breaking? Like, name what what, what part of ZF or ZFC I'm breaking by doing. Uh, what did you say? ZFC or? Yeah, ZF or ZFC. Well, I mean, you you were referring to a different set now. But wait, wait, wait. Hold on. What is it? You just said I'm breaking something by taking one trait from one set and moving it to the other. I'm asking what. Super, I mean, I don't know if you're into MBG or some other foundations, but I'm assuming you're in ZFC. So I'm asking, what axiom of ZFC am I breaking? Uh, when you say ZFC, well, what, what are you talking about? Uh, Zermelo, Franco, and Choice. That's the foundation for set theory. Okay. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that. But uh, okay, so I, I, this is what I mean. Like, if, if you're if you're talking about set theory, but you don't know ZFC, this is just this. I'm not trying to insult you or anything, but this is like basic set theory right this is the first thing you learn like in a open any set theory textbook and you'll learn the the, the classic uh, axioms of zfc or zf it doesn't matter so go and like they're all really easy to understand like you know you probably already know some of them just but like intuitively um so just look and tell me wh when you have a chance find which part is being broken by what we're doing and then we can we can like continue this conversation yeah, but uh, that, that's not a big issue. Yeah, I can look into that uh, to get more familiar with it. But uh, to, just to keep going, right? Uh, just to formalize the trait equalization part. How do you get to? How do you get to the contradiction uh, per, predicate formula? Uh, so you but we, we just we just did the contradiction part, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, how do you how do you uh, infer that from uh, from this uh, from the equalization process? Right? So this, we don't uh, infer that. They're 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 part of the same pr uh, premise. We're saying that given that if we're if we're granting that they're equalizable, then this is the case. But that's just the, if you want to argue that, um, for instance, they could be equalizable, but this contradiction doesn't occur, then you just have to make an argument against it. Or you might make the argument that equalization can is impossible or something, or it's incoherent. Then you would make an argument against that premise. But all we're doing is we're just formalizing what that premise is saying, right? So we're saying we're taking the different parts of it and just putting it together. Yeah, sure. Uh, and um, so we already defined this predicate. Uh, what would be your next step? Uh, you, are you just saying that, that there's a predicate that could be applied to this set? Wait, which predicate are we talking about? The equalizable one? Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah, so we're, we're just saying that 
suppose we have like a long uh, a long form that we're saying that if we put this in conditional form, if um, um, the the two sets in question are equalizable in the first place, then it's the case. Then the rest of what we said, then it's the case that if they share the same properties and don't, or the traits or whatever, then there's a contradiction. Okay, this is the part I wanted to see. Uh, can you write this out? Uh, again, I'm on my phone, so uh, it's, like it's, it's it's literally take what I wrote before the 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 or what ask wrote, yeah. and just before it add the new predicate we defined if, and then add a conditional if why blah 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 then blah 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 blah. So you're seeing a uh, implication. Uh, well, yeah, I of course. If you just look at the argument, there's clearly an implication. It's saying that given that we allow the if we don't allow the equalization thing if we're just saying oh that's complete nonsense there's no such thing or i'm saying traits don't exist then of course the argument the premise doesn't work right uh, what, what was the part that you wanted me to add just to see uh the, the big there's a new predicate connected. we defined and just add a conditional so if the the two sets in question we're talking about um are equalizable then blah 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 there would be there would be a um uh sorry there would be a contradiction given this and this. Uh, just to rephrase, um, you're saying that if uh, the predicate uh, equalizer, the, the predicate, uh, this equalizable uh, predicate contains, it can take two sets. And uh, this uh, predicate uh, refers to if this set is equalizable to this uh, other set. If right, it's so it's set true. Two. It's true if um, one set is equalizable and vice versa. Yeah, so that predicate is true in that case. Yes, correct. And um, the the pre, the um, to rewrite this, the write the whole thing. You would say that uh, if this predicate uh, is true, this implies the contradiction uh, part. Yeah, exactly. So if if we grant the the beginning part, which is that they're equalizable, then this follows this contradiction, which we agreed with. Okay. Now now it's a big picture. Uh, now my question. So basically, you're. Um, uh, you're saying that this implication is true by virtue or? Wait, sorry, so you, 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 you kind of cut out. Can you say that again? Uh, yeah, I'm asking you that this, uh, this big implication that we have uh, constructed now. Mm -hmm. uh, right, I, I'm asking you that um, uh, this is true by, uh, by you just assuming this is a premise. Or uh, is this a tautology? It's a premise of the argument, and we're saying that we're basically saying that because here's the problem: because like equalize, if if you if you for instance say that, oh, I have no idea what e the idea of equalizing traits is nonsense. It's just it's incoherent. It leads to a contradiction. Then clearly you would reject that premise, right? But the idea is the person who's going through this argument is going to most of the time will probably grant the idea that yeah, sure, I can imagine uh, a pig having this other trait, right? And so they'll grant the antecedent. And so then the consequence is just saying something trivial. OK, it seems like you have a, uh, you have a whole formal formalization in terms of predicate uh, logic, like uh, poor name the trait. Like, because now you said that this was a, a premise in the main frame. I, I thought we were in this, um, this mini, uh, this mini uh, with P1 and P2 as earlier. But yeah, yeah, I'm talking about no. P1 here. I don't, I don't know what you mean with respect to the mini argument or the larger argument. I'm just talking about P1 here. Uh, okay, I thought you might refer to the main uh, main frame of uh, name the trait in the version five. But yeah, okay, so uh, that um, you're saying that uh, this implication that we constructed that refers to P1 then, correct? Wait, sorry, say the last part again. It requires what? Uh, this uh, implication that um, uh, we constructed, we, we, yeah. Yeah, that refers to uh, P1. Uh, yeah, I'm assuming, I, I'm assuming I'm thinking the same P1 as you, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, I can read it out. Uh, it's the, if your view affirms a given human trait, human is trait equalizable to a, a given non-human animal while retaining moral value, uh, then your view affirms the given non-human has moral value. Wait, so I thought, Actually, I thought the that, last part was your view can only deny the blah 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 has moral value on pain of contradiction right oh yeah p2 that would be p2 oh is that p2 well, whatever it is yeah so that's what we're formalizing we're just saying uh the beginning part you said the uh given that this whole equalization thing is you know we can do this then if we if we say that um 
one has moral value and the other doesn't while having the same traits there's a contradiction right. yeah uh, correct okay uh, so that that would be the uh, implication in p2 that you we just constructed uh, so, I, I, I don't know which i don't know which is p1 or p2 but yeah that's that, that's all i'm saying yeah that actually makes sense because uh, we're, we're talking about the contradiction there uh, but right. can you see p1 um hold on a second let me just go into the baker's rule um p which p1 the top one or the bottom one uh, the top one i would <laughs> say uh, if your view affirms a given human is trade equalizable to a given non-human animal while retaining moral value then your view can only yeah, yeah this is what we were saying right so it's it's only it would lead to a contradiction p and negation p right uh, yes how would you formalize this that's what we literally but that's what we did though uh, that was the p2 though wasn't it the the implication we said earlier yo is unethical is that unethical vegan no you yeah. no you nick just let let genevieve do his thing okay i don't even know what's going on i'm just asking if that was an ethical deal wait wait um uh chris right uh we're, we're just talking about p1 right because i'm we're, the contradictions in p1 if i'm not if i'm assuming i'm misreading this uh well i i don't really see it that way doesn't it literally say it has moral value on pain of p and negation p is that literally oh, not what we're saying no now, now you're talking about uh the main frame argument or or which one uh, i think we're looking at different uh, different yeah, sections yeah so the one i'm looking at for p1 ends with has moral value on pain of p and conjunction negation p uh, that's p1 okay so i <laughs> i was um, i'm looking at the um, uh, that argument but it's in a different section there uh, in the comment section okay, well, so that's that's what i'm formalizing so that's that's the one i'm, I'm refer referencing uh, so just to make sure you're you're talking uh, p1 for you is if your view affirms the given non-human uh, animal has more value then your view can only deny the given non-human animal has uh, more value on pain of p and not p that's the one that's your p1 Oh uh, yeah, I think I, I you kind of cut out, but I think the last was the part, the last part was correct. Then your view can only deny the given non-human animals moral value on pain of p negation and negation p. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, I'm I'm looking at. Um, so you uh, understand how we formalize that, right? Like if you just read through it, it's literally what we just said. We first we define that first yeah. the the y predicate, and then we define the the I forgot what it was a p or whatever. So and we're just capturing two sets. We don't have to use set language here we don't just say you set theoretic language but we just we will just choose yeah of course uh, now you're uh, p2 how would you formalize that wait so i i'll gladly do that but was was the when i came in there was like an argument about something so i'm just curious did we just move past that are we done with that or are we are we because if, if if you want me to just formalize the entire argument i have no problem with doing that but just i'm just curious where the exact problem if we're, if we're past that no, I think um, uh, we're past it because uh, my original question was uh, to uh, ask yourself was if uh, the when he says trait equalizable, uh, if that is a if it means that this is a process that can be uh, applied to a set and not the fact that a trait equalizable means that the set is actually now equal in respect to the other set. Okay, so we're we're good on that then, right? We're like we're fine. Yeah, I mean, I got clarification now, so yeah. Okay, okay, great. Okay, okay. That's that's all I wanted to hear because it, it, it sounds like there was when I came in, it seemed like there was I was just you know a lot of things happening. So I'm I'm glad we moved past that. Um, I mean, if you want the, if you want me to formalize the rest the of the everything, no, I'm glad we do it. Wait, sorry. What's yeah, that? yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, I would. Uh, I would. No, 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 like, like before you said something, I just cut you off. I didn't hear what you said. No, I. Uh, <laughs> I'm just, um, there's just tension between me and Ask Yourself because he literally is a, like, uh, he could not answer that uh, uh, question that I, I asked uh, right now was if the trait equalizable part is a, is a process in that, in that implication, or does it mean that it, it has already become trait equalizable? So that was the only thing that was, that literally took like, uh, 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 like he didn't even answer that question basically. So he kept, uh, there was just confusion there. Yeah. but. Uh, uh, if you can uh, formalize, uh, keep going. If we can have this, uh, continue this uh, formalization part. Right. So, um, 
let me let me just open this up again. Uh, sorry, it's um, I'm getting tired now. It's getting uh, almost morning here. In, I mean, it's fine. Um, you, again, we can talk about this later. I, I just I really want. I was here mostly, I think, because I just wanted to figure out where the the contention was. Um, but I mean, if that's if we're fine with that, then I think yeah, that contention. I probably, probably have to go pretty soon too, actually. So I mean, if if you want to talk about it later, I have no issue. I can. It's very it's very simple to formalize with just basic predicates. You don't need actually. If you, I, I, I will say this. Um, if you want to be really rigorous, you can do this with second order logic um, and quantifying over, uh, not just using basic quantifiers. Um, so if you wanted to go full blown over sets of traits, you can use second order logic for it. I don't think you need to. There's no reason to, but you could in principle um, if you wanted to capture the exact essence of what's being said. It doesn't require it. That's the point. No, exactly. You, you certainly don't need to use circuit. You, what, we're, what we're doing is just basic first order stuff right but if you wanted to hypothetically you could use second order here to capture a little bit better this idea of um traits and so on but again but that's, totally that's interesting yeah i mean uh yeah uh, if you can uh, when you have to go uh just uh, send me a message of the of this um when we talked about p1 and p2 and also the conclusion but even i can uh, try to formalize the only thing i don't see uh, is the inference rules in predicate logic but that but that's mainly because i haven't even uh, tried applying it because when i had this discussion with other people here on the discord the the topic always goes into this linguistic argumentation uh, while the while my crit main criticism has always been uh, the the formal part uh, and the, the, this is i'm glad that uh, at least you are here to uh, clarify this for me you know that there is a formal part and uh, this is uh, i'm glad for I will. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. I have to go like pretty soon. But it was nice talking with you. Uh, and glad this uh, this whole thing before was kind of resolved. I think uh, it's a good. Yeah. Just uh, yeah, send Jen, me I'm, your... I'm amazed that you managed to crack through his thick skull. So um, yeah, UV. <laughs> do we have agreement from you now that the argument is sound, or are you still going to now be a sophist and pretend uh, like you have some trouble with the argument? Well, I mean, we still haven't uh, hashed it out all the way. Uh, right. Me, um, so I'm so the sure question, about... right. So the question would be, do you actually doubt one of the premises at this point? If you look at the original argument, right, it's right there. Name the trait. Do you think that one of those premises is false? Uh, well, I don't, I don't know. I still don't know. Uh... No, I know this. So we're, you're, you're just so so you're still you're still just in the same fucking spot. It's astounding. So just to be clear, when we talk about this, when we say if we are trait equalizing two beings, if they're trait equalized, they can't differ with respect to some property like moral value. Are you still doubting that? Uh, not the, in the linguistic sense, but in okay. the formal sense, I still you, don't see it. Just to be, no, I'm just, I'm just asking but, if, if uh, on however, your, on just, no, 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 one second, don't make me use priority again. I'm asking if you have a tr trouble understanding this, if you agree with this, right? So you understand that if two things are equalized in all respects, they can't differ in some respect. That's just going to be a contradiction. It's not going to make sense. Obviously, if we equalize all of the traits of two beings, and one of them has moral value, we know that the other has moral value. Is there any confusion there? Or do you understand this now? I mean, I would, I've said it, it is a contradiction, yes. Right, so, uh, you, agree, say, so you agree with P1 do, of the please argument? Please don't do this. Don't so, do wait, this wait, wait, so just to be clear, do you agree now with P1 of the argument? Uh, not in the formal way. Okay, so what what do you think you mean when you're saying that? Are you telling me that you doubt that if two things are equalized in all respects that they can't differ in some respect? What requires formalization about that? That is the simplest thing that I think I've said in like a month. Well, I mean, that's uh, linguistic. Yeah. yeah, so do you actually doubt? Are you telling me that you are not, you're not sure that if a human and a non-human animal are trade equalized, that they can't be unequal with respect to some trait. Are you doubting that still? Right, so this is why I say never make sure, nev never assume you've gotten through to uh, unethical vegan because you can, never, you can never underestimate how confused and dishonest he is. So 
unethical vegan are you are you actually going to tell me are you actually going to tell me that you are not sure about p1 you're not sure if it's the case that if two beings are equalized in all respects that they can't differ in any respect or do you finally accept that if they're equalized then yes they're equal right so if they're equalized it can't be that they differ in some respect so just like P1 says, right? If a given human is trade equalized to an animal while retaining moral value, the animal has moral value or else you'd have two objects that are equalized but not equal. So do you accept premise one now? When you say trade equalizable, do you mean and do you please answer, this, do, please answer this. No, 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 just just listen to me. Traits refer to anything true of the being in question. I'm asking you if all of the traits are equalized it can't be that they vary with respect to some trait. It is not confusing, dude. When you, how, how, look, look, do you, do you object to that premise? It's just yes or no. Do you object to that premise? In fact, let me phrase it like this. Do you accept that premise? The fact that they're, if they're equalized, then they're the same object. No! What are you talking about? We're talking about, look at what P1 says. It says, if your view affirms a given human is trait equalizable to a given non-human animal while retaining moral value, then your view can only deny the given non-human animal has moral value on pain of contradiction, okay? So if two beings are equalized, right? All of their traits are the same. They can't differ with respect to some trait. They can't, it can't be that one has moral value and then the other doesn't, right? If they're equalized and moral value is retained, you can't then say the animal lacks moral value. That's just going to be a contradiction. You're going to be saying that two equalized things are unequalized. Do you, do you I, doubt, I that, the, do you accept that P1 or not? Are you talking P1? Do you accept P1 or not? Of, of course I'm talking about the central argument. Why, did, why would you even ask that? Yes, the same argument I've been talking to you about the entire time. Do you accept P1 or not? I thought you referred to the previous... Uh, no, I'm referring to the one that I just read you, dude. Do you accept P1 or not? If you accept P1, we don't even need to talk about the supporting argument because it's a supporting argument for P1. Do you accept P1 or not? Okay, so you accept P1. My question... So, wait, answer. Dude, look, I know that you simply... Are, you're just... You're so delusional, and you will just never concede, right? Because what you don't want to do, it's just like when fucking JHC talked to you for so long, just trying to get you to understand what soundness meant, right? And you just couldn't grasp it, and you just wouldn't admit it. You don't want to just sit there and say, fuck it, you're right, Isaac. That premise is true. I want to hear you say it. Do you doubt that that premise is true? Yes or no? I'm good. Do you really want to go down this road? Do you doubt you that that premise is true? Yes or no? I don't know. Okay, so you're not, you're, you're still, right. So he's still not sure. He still doesn't know. I, I mean, I rest my case. He still doesn't fucking know. It's just unbelievable. It's impossible. Do you, do you have a like a, a conversation problem? Like, do you have autism, dude?